Hello America, this is Call of Duty Goddess. Today is October 28, 2016. It seems our beloved FBI Director James the Cleaner Comey has decided to open up the Clinton email investigation all over again just 10 days before the election. So let's go to Fox News and try to figure out why this may be happening. And now we have more information about yeah. the fallout from these WikiLeaks documents and the reopening of this case. What have you learned? Yeah. A big deal. And we've just confirmed this at Fox News. We have a copy of the letter. I have it right here from James Comey, the FBI director, sending this to Congress that the criminal investigation of Hillary Clinton, the former Secretary of State, is back on. Uh, what is key here is that he is saying in the letter to uh, top uh, chairman and chairwoman on Capitol Hill, quote, in connection with an unrelated case, the FBI has learned of the existence of emails that appear to be pertinent to the investigation. This is James Comey at the FBI. I am writing to inform you that the investigative team briefed me on this yesterday, and I agreed the FBI should take appropriate investigative steps designed to allow investigators to review these emails to determine whether they contain classified information as well as to assess their importance to our investigation. Although the FBI cannot yet assess whether or not this material may be significant, and I cannot predict how long it will take us to complete this additional work. I believe it is important to update your committees about our effort, efforts in light of my previous testimony. A couple of things going on here. Obviously, number one, James Comey may be trying to cover his back a bit here. He is under intense pressure from various members of Congress, people in the public saying, what in the world happened with this investigation as more and more emails and questions spill out, number one. So it is a strong possibility that James Comey is trying to save his behind because he was subpoenaed to give all of the 302s to Congress. He did not do that. He held back a certain amount of 302s for horse trading with the DOJ. Let's watch and listen. Remember, this is a document that is under subpoena. And rather than complying with the subpoena and sending it to Congress as required by law, they're over there having a negotiation and a discussion that the FBI term, terms in their own documents as a quid pro quo. Now let's go a little bit further in this video and find out who made the decision to produce the 302s to Congress. So let me say this. I think that uh, I think the director made principal decisions about what to say to Congress when he was here and also what to provide to Congress. So the FBI director, James Comey, is the one who made the decisions of what 302s were given to Congress. Let's hear it one more time. The director made principal decisions about what to say to Congress when he was here and also what to provide to Congress. And then in this hearing, this FBI agent was served a subpoena on behalf of Congress for the rest of the 302s. Will the FBI provide to Congress the full file with no redactions of personal identifiable information? I cannot make that commitment sitting here today. Then I'm going to issue a subpoena and I'm going to do it right now. So let's go. I've signed this subpoena. We want all the 302s and we would like the full file. You can accept service on behalf of the FBI? Certainly. You are hereby served. Number two, what is the fallout for Hillary Clinton? I mean, when, when James Comey, the director of the FBI, says, I don't know how long this will take uh, to clear all of this up. So with early voting and with 12.6 million votes already cast, how many of those are for Hillary that are Donald Duck and Mickey Mouse voting for Hillary? Will that be enough to stop the elections? Is that what we're all seeing take place right now with this? We'll think about that as we get back to Comey saving his behind. This is the man in the Bush administration for context who stood up to President Bush's inner circle uh, when they were pressuring him to continue uh, the wireless uh, surveillance program that that uh, uh, the, that he believed uh, should not continue. Uh, he would not sign off on it. Uh, then with the Justice Department, not FBI director, stood up to the White House counsel, uh, stood up uh, there uh, with the attorney general, John Ashcroft, and said, I'm not doing this. And that is why uh, a lot of Democrats and 
and Republicans were saying at the beginning of this criminal investigation uh, that James Comey is the perfect person to sort through all this. Right. So James Comey is the perfect person to investigate Hillary Rodham Clinton and her email scandal. James the cleaner Comey, who comes in and has been cleaning up after the Clintons for years, who in 2004 saved America from the warrantless wiretapping program, while at the very same time saved Sandy Berger, Bill Clinton's national security advisor, by changing the warrantless wiretapping laws, as Sandy Berger was being investigating for stealing classified documents from the archives. They were also looking at emails. Just so happens I did a video that shows James Comey's timeline, his history, his employment history, and everything about him in this video, Bombshell, the Clinton Cartel Exposed Part 2, James the Cleaner Comey. And if you're not much on videos, but you like to read, well then you can find out about that in the review of the Department of Justice's involvement with the President's Surveillance Program. And that was the DOJ Office of the Inspector General Oversight and Review Division on July 2009, that report. And then after you read that report, you will want to read Sandy Berger's theft of classified documents, unanswered questions. And by the way, this is a pretty fair report because it's not only based on Sandy Berger's testimony, it is based on a pretty fair investigation. And I'll leave the links below so you can read both of these and see for yourself you look at a timeline, you can see exactly what James Comey did and why he did it. All right. Do you ever wonder how it is that uh, no one, no one at the Clinton campaign was given a heads up on this, we're told. No one at the White House was given a heads up on this. No one at the State Department given a heads up on this to Judicial Watch President Tom Fitton on this. And, and Tom, I was wondering if maybe they're you know, concerned about loose lips and, and getting word out. And I'm thinking of that time that Bill Clinton, you know, hopped on board Loretta Lynch's plane just to chat. Uh, maybe they were concerned about that. But what do you make of that? Oh, I don't think make much of it. I think uh, the director's hand was forced by the revelations earlier this week by the Wall Street Journal that his top deputy was essentially through his wife on the payroll of Terry McAuliffe, the governor of Virginia, one of the closest Clinton friends in elected office there is. And then so you think that's, an, this is all linked to that? Uh, uh, nothing. I don't think any of this is voluntary. I think the f director's hand was forced here. He had an internal rebellion, according to reporting even at Fox News from FBI agents, uh, former and current. And uh, he couldn't stand in the way anymore. But the rebellion after... would have, to give it still more reason for him to swallow his pride and have to do an about face, that is Director Comey, he would have to have been presented with new stuff that would push him to do that, right? Not just well, a you know, rebellion. The, uh, th this is a terrible situation for Mrs. Clinton, but the FBI comes off looking as the Keystone Cops, and that's the charitable interpretation. Why hadn't they gotten? Aberdeen's computer devices prior to this time. Aberdeen had an email account on the Clinton email server, the only State Department official other than her that we're aware of, of other than Hillary Clinton, to mm. have an account on this email system. We know classified material was in her emails, Aberdeen's emails, through our litigation, and yet it's only recently they go looking for emails at her home or on her devices. What was the FBI doing? that they waited so long to ask these key questions. No, that's a very Mr. good, no, no, actually, a that's a very good point. To now, we're told this came to light because obviously a separate investigation going on against her husband, her estranged husband, uh, Anthony Weiner, a Sexton case that they're looking into, and this came up in the course of that investigation. Do you buy that? No. I, I, believe, I believe the documents were there for the taking as a result of that investigation. In other words, what should... she could have been co commenting and talking and communicating with him uh, and, and compromised material came over. 
I, th I think they seized the devices, it looks like, in the course of the investigation of Wiener, but they should have seized the devices for other reasons. Well, they've got because four of devices. Abedin's they've got four devices. Now, let's assume that one each from, from, from Hamidin and, and, and the congressman, uh, former congressman. I, what, Neil, what, what else? If, if, Neil, if you were the advisor, or key advisor, or secretary of state, and you had a secret email system, we're on her secret email system, and there are records showing you were getting classified information, every computer that you and your family own would be in the custody of the federal government and the FBI would have taken it all. And the fact they hadn't done it until evidently recently uh, raises additional questions about what the FBI was doing and the compromised, corrupted investigation by the FBI and the Justice Department into Hillary Clinton, who is a favored person in terms of uh, any investigation by this administration. Uh, we are in a crisis right now as a result of what Mrs. Clinton did and what the compromised co-conspirators over in the Obama administration has done for her. And now we've got this mess a few days before the election. It isn't fair to the voter. And frankly, it isn't even fair to Hillary Clinton that they're throwing this stuff out there at the last minute without any further detail to help voters or even Mrs. Clinton uh, defend herself at this, la with, well, with this no, last minute. Well, no, you're right about this. And fuselage. apparently they were exercised over how to go about this. We're learning from our Washington office that the debate was going something like this. Do we do it now or do we do it later? That was a tough question. This is an enforcement official speaking to uh, one of our Washington people. The decision was made to inform the committee now about what they had because they didn't want to be accused of holding information that could have been pertinent to the investigation and then have to inform Congress after Election Day. So they were doing, if that's to be believed, their own Heine covering. You know, I, you know, I hear all this and it, it, it just reconfirms why Comey should have nothing to do with this anymore why there needs to be some type of independent counsel or special counsel which is allowed under the regulations of the Justice Department right. uh, and there's got to be a new look we have to have a fresh eyes on this whole scandal and this is going to take place whether or not Mrs. Clinton is elected I guarantee you there's going to be a special counsel I suspect there'll be a special counsel and a criminal investigation no matter who wins the president no matter who wins no, I think you could be right about that Tom Fitton Judicial Watch president now, it may very well be voluntary that Comey is doing this in order to save his behind, because Comey obstructed justice by not supplying Congress with the subpoena documents that they asked for. With the way Hillary and the communists are acting, it's making Comey look like he is bipartisan, when in fact he is part of the Clinton cartel. This is a cover-up, folks. And there does need to be an independent counsel to investigate this situation with Hillary Clinton. Unfortunately, the FBI agreed to destroy evidence in the Clinton email scandal. So not only did Comey obstruct justice by not supplying Congress with all of the subpoena 302s, but he ordered some of the evidence against Hillary destroyed. Here's a letter sent on October 3rd, 2016 to Attorney General Loretta Lynch from Chairman Goodlatte of the Judiciary Committee. Like many things about this case, these new materials raise more questions than answers. Please provide a written response to the below questions and make DOJ staff available for a briefing on this matter no later than October 10th, 2016. Number one. Why did the FBI agree to destroy both Cheryl Mills and Heather Samuelson's laptops after concluding this search? Number two, doesn't the willingness of Ms. Mills and Ms. Samuelson to have their laptops destroyed by the FBI contradict their claim that the laptops could have been withheld because they contained non-relevant privileged information? And it goes on. James Comey is trying to save his butt and hopefully stop the election in the process. Now, if, if you're still not convinced about what James Comey's role is, that he is part of the Clinton cartel, let me show you a little clip from 2007 here. So to set up a backdrop on this video, this is from 2007 when James Comey was testifying in Congress about how he saved America in 2004 from the warrantless wiretapping program, when in reality it's my belief that George Bush set up Gonzales 
to be in the hospital room of Ashcroft to ask for a signature. James Comey is now going to describe to you Ashcroft being in bed and Gonzalez coming in and asking for the signature. James the Cleaner Comey should now be called James the Drama Queen Cleaner Comey. Watch this. Attorney General Ashcroft then stunned me. Uh, he lifted his head off the pillow and in very strong terms expressed his view of the matter, rich in both substance and fact, which stunned me, drawn from the hour-long meeting we'd had a week earlier, and in very strong terms expressed himself, and then uh, laid his head back down on the pillow, it seemed spent, and said to them, but that doesn't matter because I'm not the Attorney General. In true drama queen form, this is how James Comey operates. He is doing the same thing that he did in 2004. Folks, what we are witnessing is nothing but a dog and pony show because I have not heard one single person talk about the 302s and James Comey withholding them from Congress. The 302s were subpoenaed. That's got to be against the law. He should suffer some consequences for that. But Jason Chavitz, the Judiciary Committee, no one on any of the House Oversight Committee or the Judiciary Committee is mentioning this. This is extremely important. James Comey should not be investigating anything. He should be on trial right now for what he did, not only with the 302s, but for destroying evidence for having FBI agents destroy the laptops of Cheryl Mill and the Samuelson girl. Th that's how that goes. So what are your thoughts on this? Do you think this is a dog and pony show? Do you think the elections will be stopped? Leave your comment below. This is Call of Duty Goddess signing off and as always, I've got your six.